stuff for you. Hey, everybody, how are you? Good evening. How's everybody doing? Hello, hello. Just reboot and then make sure the sound is okay. Hey, everybody, we're doing a special, um, a special Q and A tonight. Um, I've got a little bit of extra time before Linda's podcast goes on, which is really, really exciting. So we want to be able to offer you again, you know, I do these podcasts so I can offer as much free help, you know, as I can for people. It's really, really important that there's so many people out there that are struggling with their dogs. Um, uh, I've never seen anything new. So a lot of the questions here I've seen dozens, if not hundreds of times, if not thousands of times, we've been able to eliminate that. Um, if you're brand new to my world, um, I encourage you to go to our YouTube channel, which you're on now, Solid Canine Training. I encourage you to um, look um, through our Facebook page. Um, we have so much free content out there every day. Um, people, hey, Joe, hey, Kayla, every day people can just get more and more answers from our free content where you don't even have to hire a dog trainer. If you don't have the budget or if you're geographically not around a dog trainer, um, I do travel the, I do travel the world um, uh, training dogs make it a little bit easier for everybody. Um, but also I do Skype sessions. If you're brand new to my world and you have a dog training question, I'm gonna talk a lot about punishment. And the reason why I'm gonna um, talk about cunt punishment so much is because cunt punishment is because um, it's the only way to stop. Um, it's the only way to stop an unwanted behavior. There's a lot of sugar coating out there. There's a lot of nonsense out there. There's a lot of unethical behavior out there. There's a lot of outright lies out there. There's a lot of agendas out there. My only agenda is to help dogs and help owners, but primarily help owners. Owners are struggling. Owners are struggling. So um, a lot of times everyone will say, oh, you don't need to use punishment. Punishment is abuse. Punishment is not abuse. Not, step it, not stopping an unwanted behavior when the information is freely available um, and then being able to having to surrender your dog. I don't want to say that's abuse. Some people absolutely have to surrender their dog. You know, I spoke to some people this week who their dog was attacking them. It was so bad. They had to just, it was really bad. And they decided to um, have to put their dog down. And, you know, I didn't work with the dog, but I supported them on that because, you know, it's easy for folks to say on the sidelines, oh, they should have tried everything they should have done. You know, when you, when you have a dog that on a daily basis is going after you with intent to harm, that's a really challenging dog to live with. It really, really is. I've got huge amounts of empathy for people huge amounts of empathy for people that are struggling. My world is occupied seven days a week with biting dogs, with dogs with massive separation anxiety. So the answers that you get are usually going to be short and sweet. We usually don't have enough time to get into, you know, a full, a full answer session. Um, that's why I have my Patreon page. You can go to patreon.com slash solid canine training. You can do that. You can also um, schedule a Skype session. I don't do these to drum up business, but some people absolutely, they need 15 minutes or 30 minutes of dedicated one-on-one -on -one time. Um, you can go to RV Dog Trainer, RV Dog Trainer, excuse me, rvdogtrainer.com to see my seminar schedule. Um, there's just so much opportunity out there. A lot of folks out there are struggling with separation anxiety. We talk a lot about crating. There's always going to be a management component to dog training. A lot of my colleagues, unfortunately, are telling people, well, if you have to manage, if you got to manage your dog, well, then you, you didn't train the dog. Fine. But we manage everything. We manage our finances. We manage our life. We manage our, we manage our, mm -hmm. uh, Linda and I manage our marriage. We manage our child raising. Um, oh, God, I get an itch. I manage my business. I manage, like, we manage everything. Everything in life is managed. Um, so having a dog that when company comes over your house, you have to put your dog in a crate, you know, it's not, you know, it's not the worst thing in the world. You know, if you're in your crate and you're lying down, it's not the worst thing in the world. So we're going to talk a lot about that um, uh, 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 today. So a lot of thank you so much. Let's get right to the questions. Um, okay. And we've got Debbie, just blonder videos, Lady T, Ecological Lifesavers. I got last month and my seven-month-old Boxador has stopped digging in the yard. It's a great way. So people always ask me, let me just turn that in, into a question, Lady T. How do you stop a dog from digging in the yard? You know, I've heard every freaking recipe on how to do that fill it up with water now you've got a money dog fill the hole up with shit now you've got a shitty dog or put a remote collar on the dog the dog goes to dig a hole you make it suck to dig holes in the yard your dog could ruin your landscape and your dog can ruin, ruin your garden your dog can dig up a hole and like you can fall into it and you can get hurt so 
the best way to stop a lot of these unwanted behaviors is to make that behavior suck. So a lot of times people will flip that on. Oh, so you use pain and force to stop an unwanted behavior? Yeah, when it's dangerous, I do. And guess what? The dog stops doing it. It's not rocket science, guys. It's not rocket science. Sarah, hey, Jeff and Linda, how are you? Wait, you skipped part of this one, actually. It says that, unfortunately, she has an allergy to oh, the contact point. Awesome. And then she continues on two questions down about Lady T. Is, Is it, okay? it okay to put on the titanium contact points while she's still healing from the allergy? Yeah, um, I would just move the, move the remote. Yes, it is. Move the remote collar to a different spot on the dog's neck. Awesome. Interesting collar. Yep. Excellent. All right. Sarah. Hi, Jeff and Linda. First time catching you live on YouTube. Oh my gosh. Sarah, right, where you been? You. Come on. Jump in. Join the party. Weather's warm. Next. What? Uh, this is uh, Spinisper. What is the proper release from place? Okay or break? I don't, okay. There is no proper release. You can make up a word. You literally can say spinach. Spinach can be your release word. You're, 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 you, you, you just mentioned two English words that have zero meanings to a dog until you put meaning to it. I would stay away from the word okay. The reason is, is because it's a common word that we use in our daily conversation between humans and on the phone and um, with our family members. So we always are saying, okay, and then you'll find the dog all of a sudden just releases. Personally, I like break, but you can say break, you can say free, you can say spinach, you can say lobster roll. I mean, literally anything you want, anything you want. In our house, we say sex because we never talk about that here. Next. Whatever. Um... Jake, how do you feel about dogs on beds with humans? So I'm not against it, but if your dog, and, and I'm not talking about the in-bed behavior. I'm talking about general behavior. If your dog has separation anxiety, resource guarding of anything, especially you, aggression, leash reactivity, it's not the best plan of action. It will work against you. Next. All right. Um... Luca, how can I get rid of obsessive behavior? Well, through punishments, through punishments. And all depends on what the behavior is would deem the protocol that you would do. But tail, ta tail chasing, remote collar, make it uncomfortable. Light chasing, make it uncomfortable. OCD behavior, make it uncomfortable. We do it all the time. The imagined harm folks will say, no, that'll make it worse. Number one, how do they know that? Because they've never done it. There's no study. We have a study. We do it all the time successfully. So sometimes, by the way, if you're brand new to my show, I sound very like an egomaniac. That's because I'm extremely confident in my responses because we've successfully rehabbed so many dogs. We've successfully done these protocols and they work. And life is too short and dogs are dying. So when I'm confident with an answer, a lot of times people are like, oh, you know, know it all. I'm just saying that because a lot of times I'll get these comments. I'm like, I know maybe 1% of dog training. There's a ton out there that, that, that I don't know. And my colleagues don't know, but, it, but, but OCD behaviors, we fix all the time. Next. Um, Jake again, is there a best breed for first time dog owners? Um, I would, yeah, I would find an older dog. Um, I would find something with no behavioral issues. I would find something that doesn't have a lot of fear and isn't pushy. I would look for a, a I would start fostering dogs and see what connects with you. Um, as far as breeds, eh, you know, I'd be careful about, you know, don't get a Malinois, please. Um, I probably would stay away from some of the power breeds, um, some of the drivey breeds. I would be really careful about getting a Shepherd, a Doberman, a Rottweiler. I'd be really careful about getting a high drive lab um, because there's going to be a learning curve. So what I would do is I would start fostering some dogs and see what personalities connect with you. It's not as much breed as it is the dog. Now, with your, if your skill set set goes up, you can do dramatic things. The worst thing to probably do is get the dog that's afraid in the corner of the shelter that's shaking because you feel bad for it. Next. Okay. Dana. Hi, Jeff. I have an 11-week-old puppy. Is she too young for a pet convincer to help stop the excessive whining acting out when she is in the crate? No, nope. pet convincer bonker hit the top of the crate. A lot of people, I always like to tell both sides of the story. I am very aware of the conversation out there, guys. This isn't my first rodeo. A lot of times people will say, oh, that'll make it worse in the crate. How do you know that? Do you have proof? Have you ever seen it? We've seen it be successful. Again, 
I'm going to always challenge what the imagined harm is out there because a lot of people have this supposed it will be the worst thing ever. Meanwhile, they've never done it. Nobody they know has done it. Or they might have done it wrong. One person. And now the story gets repeated and repeated and repeated. Next. Uh, Josh. With running, can he run ahead of me slightly? He stops and turns back around on command. That won't mess up his heel walk. I don't have a problem with that. Next. <clears throat> Robin G, we've started posting your videos on our rescues volunteer page to show our volunteers what should be expected of awesome. the dogs and how to achieve it. Thanks Ro so much Robin, for all the free content. That's how you get great volunteers and great foster. You can even come up with like a PDF file <clears throat> or a series of videos on a playlist that they should be able to watch. Awesome. Kudos to you for the work you're doing. Next. Uh, this one's from Keith. Hey, Keith. Hello, guys. When we are sitting at an outdoor cafe and people pass by, should I be proactive with the e-collar correction and not let her get excited when someone is approaching? Ab she loves humans. Okay. That, that's that, Keith, that's going to be your downfall. I'm not against dogs loving humans. I don't want my dog to be excited when it sees people. I'm a little bit different. I want my dog to be neutral to people. I want my dog to ignore people. It's my, I'm a selfish dog owner. It's my dog. It's my day out. It's my evening out. And I want my dog to do it down at an outdoor cafe. I don't want people petting my dog. I don't want people talking to my dog. I want people to just walk on by. So the last thing I want my dog to do is to get excited and break command. Next. This one's from Stephanie. Hey. How do you feel about prong collars on dogs with collapse, collapsing trachea? So usually you can go up a little bit higher on the prong collar. You usually remember prong collars were designed not to harm a dog. They look barbaric, but they were designed to not harm a dog. Flat buckle collar, martingale collar, choke chain, slip bleed, um, even a harness if it rides a little bit high um, um, can cause can cause damage. So, um, uh, but a remote collar is going to be your best option. Next, uh, this one's from Sarah. Vacay in Montreal, traveling with four dogs, one bird, two kids, and hubby. All right, Sarah. Fun. Sounds great. Um, next one is from Sir Chirpalot. Hey, Sir Chirpalot. Big thanks to you, Jeff, and whole team. Your tips have been a great help. Awesome. And I've got a great, fantastic <laughs> staff at the training center. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, Spinisper. Thanks so much. Probably overthinking it. I'll use break, LOL. I might say lobster roll. Spinisper, you're definitely overthinking it. Next. <laughs> Josh. With San Diego no longer available, will you? when will you come to L.A.? Um, I'm going to be out in L.A. in February, but that's for one of my seven-day conferences that I teach, Train the Trainers. I don't know yet. Right now, I've got to spend pretty much the next full year in Providence with my training center um, and my family. So some things have changed, and um, it's family first, business second, and unfortunately, traveling had to take a back seat. But I'm telling you, I love RV life. It's one of the happiest times of my life. Um, but I love my family more, and I love making sure my business um, uh, stays um, stays together and grows. So um, not, not, no, no weekend seminars, but why don't you come up to Seattle? It's a quick trip up to Seattle. Next. Mm. Tiffany, sex, ha, 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 ha. I love the humor. One thing you'll get from me is humor. Thank you. Debbie. Hey, Debbie. My dog runs and barks furiously to the fence when one particular small dog goes past our yard. I've used the remote collar and he just keeps on going crazy. What should I do? So Debbie, you're underwhelming your dog. So we do this <laughs> successfully all the time. Number one, I would need to know what the model of remote collar it is. I would need to know exactly how it's fitting on the dog. I would want to know that it's making good contact. I'd want to know what, what the brand of the collar is. I think I might've already mentioned that. And I would want to know when you push the button and what level. Next. But we do that protocol all the time successfully. Next. Leanne. Hey, Leanne adopted a dog two months ago. We brought her home. We fitted her with prongs and started her in the crate. She now can be off leash with us and has an awesome recall. Your videos equipped us. Thank you. Leanne, fist bump, bam, proud of you. <clears throat> two months, people struggle with two years. This is the thing. All my information is out there for free. You grabbed it, ran with it, applied it. That's the magic. Love you, Leanne. Next. Um, Caucasity. Would you correct for excited spinning? Absolutely. <coughs> Great story. Tash in New Zealand. I met her in Australia at a seminar. She had a bull terrier. Oh, bull terriers are supposed to spin. That's what all the vets said, the behaviorists said, the trainers said, 
all the chat rooms. It, you'll never be able to stop it. Kill the dog. She tried everything. Every time the dog heard an environmental outside, historically trucks are loud noises, the dog span and span, spin and spin and spin and spin. It bloodied its tail. It was like, it was horrific. I said to her, I met her, I met her in Australia at a weekend seminar. She didn't even have her dog with her. And I said, uh, have you tried a remote collar? No. She bought one there. I don't care where she bought one from. Put it on the, I said, put it on the dog. As soon as the dog starts to sequence, correct it high. Make spinning suck. She fixed it in a day. Seven years, one day. It wasn't a fluke. We do this all the time. Her life was freaking miserable with this dog. Seven years of spinning. Seven years of trainers, seven years of vets, seven years of drugs, seven years of no, seven years of everything, nothing worked. We do this all the time. Next. Um, Mike. Jeff, recovering from knee surgery and place has helped me keep my GSD under control while I am recovering. Mike, Thank you. Awesome. That's what we do. Place is great. My dogs are in place right now lying down. Next. Tiffany. I watch your videos all the time and I see boarding dogs socializing. Do you allow free play? Where no. can they let loose? No, we don't allow play at our training center. The reason is they're not there to play. They're there to socialize. So you'll see daycare dogs, board and play dogs and board and train dogs socializing. It's a cocktail party, not a mosh pit. Got it? It's the symphony. It's the ballet. It's not a football game. When I mean football, I mean real football, European football. They're there to socialize. Walk amongst and talk amongst yourself. Next. Caucasity. He is a working line European Doberman, and if not in heel, will spin when on leash and excited. And while very excited, waited for a ball throw in crate while in the car, etc. Okay. So during the during the ball throw, I'm not as concerned about that. That's in a route. That, I'm not as concerned about that. And you can actually pick and choose. So if I was about to play chuck it with my dog, this is what I want you to do, though. But in the car, bullshit. In the crate, eh, not acceptable. During ball play, though, hey, when I play with my balls, I'm spinning around. When she's playing with my balls, I'm like, I'm afraid to move because she'll clench down. This is what I want you to do. I want you to do this. I want you to put your dog into a down and release the ball. Sometimes let it spin. Sometimes let it down. Turn it, get it an on off switch. Next. Okay. Mm. <laughs> Keith, no, Ke uh, Keith. Keith. No. Is tail chasing a bad thing? This is my first dog. She's seven months. Wonder what other behaviors or issues with lab pit mix and what should I be looking for as unacceptable for healthy, happy dogs? So, I mean, Keith, the, 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 the list is too long of what's unacceptable. But tail chasing is. It, is, it can lead to a lot of OCD, neurotic, um, unbalanced behaviors in dogs. I don't want dogs doing that. It's cute, makes a funny video, but it will eventually drive the dog nuts. There's a host of a list of unacceptable behaviors, everything we stop. So you know, barking, digging, biting, jumping, um, uh, pulling on the leash, not holding a command, getting in the trash. I mean, you, you can, we can go on and on and on. Just listen to my show. Listen to all my shows. Next. Candace. Hey, Candace. Jeff, I have spent years following you, and I've got all the baseline down. Awesome. One of my dogs has serious prey drive. We just moved and are living with a cat now. Tips yeah. on how to deal with this. Doing crittering protocols is making small process, but he is a shepherd lab, and I'm worried that I can't break him on this. He recalls after starting to chase rabbits in the field. So what I would do is this. If This is a couple of different things. You could put the dog in avoidance. Bottom line, just put him in avoidance. So we have two cats in the house. If my dog's even signaled on the cats, I would make it suck. Don't do that. Just put the dog into avoidance. Easiest thing to do. It's a high level on the remote. Make it suck to do it. Next. Um, Frank. Hey, Frank. Hey, Frank. what's up, Frank, in British Columbia? Good old <clears throat> BC. Jeff, I love the way you are clear about how you are with your dogs, but very open and accepting as to what others want. Just had to say. Oh, thanks, Frank. Thank you. Keith. Hey, Keith. I can't thank you enough. You too. You're incredible. We love you. All right, Keith. Thank you. Thanks. Ecky e e e Madness. Yep. My dog reacts with high whines when it comes to people with high energy. 
When I correct with the e-collar, different levels, he lets out a high-pitched audible and continues to whine. What can I do? So this is the thing with whining. Whining, you have to figure out what the right level is. I don't know what the number is, and it might be a combination of Nick. It might be a combination of continuous. It might be low. It might be high. It's a sequence. We call it fishing. You're literally fishing for the right level. You can also give the dog. You can also bonk the dog. A bonker is just a wrapped up towel. You can watch my videos on bonker. You can go to Gary Wilkes, his page, and look about bonkers. All that is is just an arousal stopper. So your dog is aroused. That's why it's whining. The reason why your dog keeps whining is most likely you're underwhelming the dog, or you might be, when you underwhelm the dog, you might be driving the dog into more whining. So the first time you're trying to fix whining, stop whining, it might be a little bit challenging, but you got to figure out what the magic formula is. Next. Mm -hmm. Sarah. Brothers, seven weeks old, very confident, dog chasing my fearful dog for fun, but don't want to escalate. It's a hunting dog. Fearful dog won't correct puppy. We both want behavior to stop. What to do? Um, you got two seven-week-old dogs. Sarah, I'm not trying to give you a hard time. You're on the road right now with your bird. I know. You got your hands freaking full. That's a lot of dog. But to stick to your question and not to lecture you, um, what I would do is you've got to advocate for the, the fearful dog then. So you've got to tell the puppy that's chasing, cut it out. Best way to do that is with a bonker. So bonk the dog. You say no to the bonker at the dog. Or you can bonk the dog with, a, I mean, use a pet convincer or do a little bit of a poke in the butt with the dog. Next. Uh, ideally, your dog would go, boom, and nail, nail the dog on the nose. That, ideally, that's what would happen. That's what we look for. Next. Okay. Uh, Luca, what punishment should I use if I can't use an e-collar? I have a pug. Depends on the behavior, Luca. Luca, you got to be more, you got to ask me a specific behavior. What you're going to be looking for is something intolerable. It's got to be intolerable. <clears throat> so is the dog off leash or on leash? If the dog's off leash, it's going to be a little bit more challenging. So dog's on leash, you can use a leash correction. You can use a, you can use a, a, a bonker. But I mean, that's the great thing about remote collars is they're not just for punishment, but boy, it's a fantastic device for punishment. But I would need to know like what you're doing, what's your dog doing that you want to stop. Next. Um, Lori Hoffman. Hi guys, for Patreon, I didn't receive the last video. Was it number 17? I received number 16, which we saw already. Lori, I haven't posted it yet because I'm behind. I'm behind the eight ball on this one. It's not about you receiving it. It'll be posted on the Patreon page. So check the Patreon page. I'm probably going to do it tomorrow. Probably going to do it tomorrow. I'll get all the answers up tomorrow. All right, next. Um, and then Lori's talking about my Patreon page, patreon.com slash solid canine training. You can ask a question. You get a really long answer. You can also do Skype sessions too. Next. Um, Josh says, I will try and make it August 11th for Seattle. I requested vacation days for San Diego and work makes it a tad hard to change yeah. vacation days. I really hope to make yeah, it. Yeah, I know. Sorry about that, buddy. And also I think, I think working spots are sold out for Seattle, but we have tons of room in that venue. So we have plenty of audit spots. Next. Uh, Eki Madness. When it comes to an e-collar, when would you use the different levels, working, fishing, max, et cetera? Well, all those levels, by the way, all those levels, there is an art to using remote collar training. Anybody that out there says remote collar training is a lazy person. It's like, no, it's not. If I gave a remote collar to most of the population, they would know what the frick to do with it. To me, I think remote collar training, because we also do food training. We do, we do clicker training, marker training, food training. Remote collar training is actually more challenging. So there's an art to it. Working level is what we use to teach an obedience command. To teach an obedience command. Maximum level, which we rarely use, would be to stop an unwanted behavior. Punishment level, which can be, we don't know what the number is. Like there's no number attached to it. It's something that the dog finds intolerable. And we only do that on something in obedience on a known command. So right now, if you're sitting there and you're like, oh, my dog doesn't come back when I call it, I'm just gonna put a collar on my dog and, and just correct my dog, it'll run away from you. Why? You didn't teach it. You still gotta teach it what, what it wants. Next. Okay. Lori, question I asked was, any tips on using a bark collar? I never used one and I'm using Next week for a client for fence barking in yard. 
So just, I mean, it's, our colors are pretty simple to use. I've talked about this in many, many videos. It also comes with instructions, Lori. It comes with instructions. Also, if you own a dog, use it on your own dog. Use it on your own dog first. Try it. But what you're going to do is, we like the new, um, we actually are liking now the e-collar technologies, the new one that they've got out. And you just set it on the, the, the lowest level. The dog, you can't set the lowest level for barking is not going to work outside. Don't put it on automatic. At what level is the right level? When the dog barks, yips, and stops. If the dog barks through it, it's the wrong level. But it comes with an instruction book. Investigate. All right, investigate. Like, open up the instruction book. There's also tons of free videos out there. Next. Uh, Sabrina says, love the face Linda made at the ball comments. Yeah, yeah I know. She's, she's, I'm waiting for her to walk up the show. Thank God we're married or she'd file a complaint. Mm-hmm. I don't make enough money for this. No, you don't get paid at all next. <laughs> I know. Uh, Jake, dog is nervous or reactive to smaller dogs that pull and bark toward her, but seem less nervous around bigger dogs. Have you seen this before? Every day. So you know what I do? If I was walking my dogs and a little yappy dog, and nothing against little yappy dogs, um, came barking towards my dog, I'd move out of the way. I would move out of the way. I'm not going to like get into an argument. If they were off leash, I would do something different. But, and if they were on an extended leash and they, and they kept coming towards me, I would do something different. But if the owners just got the dog on a leash, I would utilize space. I don't need to show that my dogs can walk by barking dogs. I'm just be like, you know what? Sidewalk's all yours, buddy. Take it. Next. Becky Madness. Hi, Jeff and Linda. What is crittering? Crittering is a protocol we do. Just, um, it's a, it's too long to describe here. It's one of those things that takes a long time. It's a protocol we do to usually get dogs to not be as aroused sometimes. We're not doing it as much as we used to do. We're just bonking dogs instead. Um, we can use it sometimes to get dogs to exist around cats, exist around wildlife. Um, we're not doing it that much though anymore. Next. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jeff. This is Candace. Uh, he has been choosing avoidance already, so I'll run with it. Madly in love with you too. Awesome, Candace. Love Thank him. you. Lori. They want to start barking right away, and we didn't have time to work on e-collar yet, so I suggested bark collar. Sure, but you can also use an e-collar, too, for, for barking. Dog barks, find the level. I don't know what level. Find the level. The dog stops barking. To me, I'd rather use a remote collar, but it just remote collars don't work when you're unattended. Bark collar works when you're unattended. Next. Mm -hmm. um, Kayla. I just want to clarify, when you tell people they are underwhelming the dog, what exactly do you mean? Can you explain a little? Who said that? Kayla? Mm -hmm. Kayla. Can you hear me? Can you hear the answer? Can you hear the answer? Yeah, I'm here. Angela, we have to do this, okay, buddy? So I just answered your question. Did you hear me? No. My voice was underwhelming to you. Got it? Underwhelming means your levels aren't high enough. And it's not by the number. It's also <laughs> about the environmentals that are going on. Don't focus on a number. So a lot of times, and what happens is the dog is aroused in drive or there's too many environmentals that your voice, right? That your voice or the remote is, is the dog's not paying attention. So that's underwhelming. Next. Does he have his tablet? Yes, okay. he does. Yep. Is he going to have to leave? Uh, no. Okay. Next. Um, ba -ba -ba, Sarah. No different Sarah, one week, one is seven week old dog, brother's dog, three years old, fearful dog, oh. mine. Oh, I didn't, okay. Attended your Rhode Island summer right. last year. All right. I didn't remember. All right, Sarah. Um, at what age can you start bonking a puppy? I mean, if I had a, if I had a puppy that was 10 weeks old and it was nipping me, I'd bonk him. Barking in the crate, I'd bonk him. And all the information, all the information um, that you hear out there there's going to be like, oh, you'll ruin the relationship with the dog. That's the biggest, and you'll read that next. That's the biggest line of bullshit that I've ever heard in my life. You won't own that dog past six months old because the number one age to give up dogs is pre one years old. Why? Because people didn't stop unwanted behaviors. But I hear this all the time. Never punish a dog before six months because you'll ruin the relationship. Bullshit. By the time the dog is 16 weeks old, you'll hate that freaking dog because it drives you crazy because you couldn't stop unwanted behaviors. Next. 
Okay, this one's from Rick D. Hey, Rick D. Rick D's a super chat. He donated money. There's a little button at the bottom. If you click on that, ask your question, your, your, your question goes right to the top. Right to the top. Next. My male duchy has the OCD behavior of walking in a circle, clearly an arousal thing. E-collar for sure, but I just wanted to make sure I know how to get the timing down. Hope I proved it provided enough info. You did. So Rick D, number one, <laughs> thanks for the $10. Thanks for being a super, a super fan. This is what I want you to do. This is the timing. There's a couple of different ways you can do it. The first time you do it, you can wait until the dog is doing the sequence, the arousal sequence. And then the next time, if the, as soon as the dog tries to start, you can do it then. What level? And keep the dog on a leash when it's doing this. If it's not practical to be on a leash, make sure it's in an enclosed area. Because remember, the remote collar is not directional. It's not directional. So you can you can do that. You can also use the bonker, which is a wrapped up towel. You would say no, and you would bonk the dog. That also eliminates arousal. Next. Okay. Uh, how do I get this gone? Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, Lori says, okay, great. Thanks. Love Patreon. Awesome. Love to have you right. on it. This next one is uh, from Maria. Yep. My puppy, three months, refuses to go potty outside. We'll walk her, short and long walks, never goes. As soon as we get home, goes in her crate, she'll pee. What am I doing wrong? I feel horrible. Help. So first of all, Maria, don't beat yourself up. You've got a 12-week-old puppy. It's possible. And first of all, check for a UTI. It's probably not. Check for UTI. It most likely isn't. you got to catch the stream, you know, check, catch the stream, and then bring it to the vet. But, but it's probably not that. It's probably behavioral. This is what I would do. First thing in the morning. First of all, monitor the dog's food, monitor the dog's water, set up an Excel spreadsheet with the days of the week across the top and the times of the day up and down, all right? And then I want you to do is track the dog's pee, poo, successful inside and not, and then mistake, I'm sorry, successful outside and then mistakes inside. So you can start getting the dog's um, patterns down. That's really, really important. Then what you do is this. Make sure your crate is nice and small. Make sure the dog has no water after say six o'clock at night. Take the dog outside first thing in the morning. Go to a spot outside and stand there. Don't go for a walk yet. The walk doesn't start until you have a successful pee. The dog pees, come back inside, put the dog in the crate. Five minutes later, now go for your walk. And then after the walk, do the same thing. See. If your dog doesn't pee and you go for a walk and you don't go back to the potty spot, what's happening is all that movement gets things going and the dog will probably pee in the crate. Your dog just doesn't, it's only 12 weeks old. Don't worry about it, but that's what you're going to do. And you go to the, go out the same door, put the dog on a leash, go to the same spot and do it. Next. Uh, John, dog keeps creeping forward from heel. 180 trick gets him back to heel, but creeps forward again. So John, the 180 might not be strong enough. Watch my video, how strong I do. And I was holding back on that video. Sometimes I do it even stronger. Also, remote collar heel, train your dog. Do that and get the dog up to punishment level. Get the dog up to punishment level. And then what I want you to do is you actually can do a toe tap. You can actually do a toe tap to the dog as well. And then what you can do is, what that is, is remember, a lot of people are like, oh, you're going to kick your dog. You're not kicking your dog. What's happening is if your dog's walking like this and you're walking like this, and all of a sudden the dog starts creeping forward, grab your left foot if your dog is healing on the left and just give a quick toe tap right there. It's a sternum. You're not going to hurt the dog. Your dog goes, whoa, what the heck was that? And moves back. But I would try to remote collar train the dog. Next. Hey, we got another super. We got two more. Super duper. Two right. more. Nice. Uh, first one, Steve. Hey, Steve. Thanks a lot. Steve hit that little dollar sign button and threw five dollars <clears throat> our way to get up in the line. Next. One-year-old GSD who loves to play with shadows from sun or light. This needs to stop ASAP, correct, yes. E-collar? Yes, Steve, absolutely smart man, E-collar. If you don't stop it, you literally will, this dog will drive itself crazy and drive you crazy. We've seen so many neurotic behaviors. On that note, please don't use those laser pens at all. Mm -hmm. And it's not cute. Also, people get reflections on a mirror or on their watch. It's not cute. I have seen dogs literally go nuts. I mean, I'm talking nuts, no disrespect to people that actually are struggling with mental illness, but these dogs are too. Um, all from OCD, light chasing, shadow chasing, ceiling fan shadows, lights coming in from outside, 
um, dream catchers, um, and, you know, so many different behaviors. So yes, remote cower is how you're going to fix it next. All right. Robin says, oopsie, no question. Just wanted to say thanks for the info. Robin, man, you can, it, you gave me five bucks. I don't even have to give you a lap dance. Hell I'll take it next. Okay. Uh, I think I missed a few. And no, you got I John Don. You got etchy madness. Etchy um, madness. Hi, Jeff and Linda. Are you planning to come back to Canada, Ontario? Yeah. Um, I'm going to try to. I'm going to try to get back to the Kelowna area. I'm going to be in Seattle, and I'm going to try to get back to Collingwood. Nothing, nothing firm yet. Nothing firm yet. Next. Okay, Lori. That's the one I got. Okay, awesome. thanks. Awesome. Lori's talking about the bark collar. Next. Um, Sarah. Uh, my dog has made a ton of progress since your seminar uh, last year. Energetic puppy is a new challenge. May attend your seminar again this fall in Rhode Island. That'd be great. September, um, Sarah, I'd love to see you. Come on down. It's in September. You can go to rvdogtrainer.com. You just got another $9.99 from somebody else. Nice. Calvin King. Nice. Um, I've been training dogs for a little over five years, and I found you one year ago. It's nice to know we have the same training tactics. Calvin, man, thanks for the kind words. Thanks for the $9.99. Thanks nice. for you out doing the hard work out there. Thanks for you being at like, you know, doing the stuff. And I've got a lot of trainers. It's funny. I, it's, it's, I got, I got a ton of trainers that can't stand me, which I'm fully aware about. Oh, well, I'm not doing this stuff to make people, you know, to make people happy. And then I've got a lot of trainers that are either going, yep, I like what that guy, that guy has to say, or, eh, I don't agree with everything, but I'm picking some stuff up. Like, that's what I do. Same thing with me. When I learn, I'm like, eh. I don't really agree with everything, but hey, that's a really good point. Let me try that. Um, so, so Calvin, thanks for the um, uh, shout out on that, and thanks for the nine ninety nine. Thanks. Um, Ernie says, explain bonking, please. Sure. A bonker is a towel. We have videos on this. A bonker is a wrapped up towel. It is just a towel. It's wrapped up, so it'd be about the thickness of pretty much. The, I, I can't turn this over. It's got tea in it. The thickness of this coffee cup turned on its side, secured with elastics. It's about 12 inches long, secured with elastic. It's actually about eight inches long, but we like us guys like to say it's 12 inches long. It's about 12 inches long, secured with elastics, and it's a towel, and it's a punisher. And what you're doing is, when the dog is aroused, you would say no, and you'd throw it at the dog. Yes, you're throwing it at the dog. Everybody freaks out. So you're hitting your dog. I'm throwing a towel at my dog. Like, it's a towel. Most rational people are like, it's a freaking cotton towel. My dog runs into like walls half the time. So that's what a bonker is. Now, you always teach the bonk when the dog is not aroused, but it's doing something small wrong. If any of you clicker train, remember when you're trying to get the dog to understand what the clicker is? What do you do? Click food, click food, click food, click food. It's like, why are, you, why are you giving the dog food and clicking? The dog isn't doing anything. I want to get the dog to understand what the click means. Click means food will be coming and it's a good thing, right? It's marking something. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say no and then bonk. I want that dog to know that the, the, the earth will shatter when I say no. Next. All right. Rick D says, also, thanks for the great content. Oh, you're welcome, Rick. Next. Jessica. Hey, guys. Uh, distractions during walks, should it be continuous with the e-collar until he looks away or a couple taps on momentary at a higher level? Jessica, try both. And on Monday, when we do the show on Monday or Tuesday, let me know what worked for you. And I'm being serious. I'm not trying to get, be snarky or get away from the question, but try both because we can do both. We do both. All depends on the what level the dog is trained at. Ideally, once the dog is trained, you want to be able to say no and then just hit the momentary stim at a higher level. And the dog goes, oops, I'm going back into position. Next. Okay. Sabrina has, it looks like she tried to use an emoji <coughs> that didn't happen. It says, my daughter's border collie came running into my yard and attacked my new two-year-old American Eskimo. What would you do other than blank your daughter? See how there's a little My spider. daughter's bo border collie came running in my, hold oh, on. Oh, you see it, but I don't. Look at my daughter's border collie came running into my yard and it's okay. So a dog attacked a dog. Number one, if you have a will, make sure the daughter's not in it anymore. And if she pays rent, quadruple the rent. Um, and then also, this is what you're going to do. Um, what would I do is this. I would actually, number one, have a sit down with your daughter and explain the rules. And if your daughter lives with you, you have to talk about some household management. I would, tell, I would say that dog has to be muzzled and leashed when it's on your property. Um, you know, we, we work with dogs like that all the time. This show is too this show is too short of a show 
to um, um, this show is too short of a show to to be able to go into a full protocol on that. So let me just do triage right now. And I would be like your dog, your dog, your, your, say to your daughter, your dog's not a lot of my property right now, but it's over with. And then make sure you start getting your dog exposed to lots of dogs and advocate for your dog. They don't have to be off leash. It doesn't have to be in a social setting. It just means get your dog around dogs so it doesn't have a fear. Next. Okay, hold on one second. Okay, Michael. Wait, no, 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 no. No, Robin G. There's the two pink ones that go right to Robin G. Yeah, no question. Okay, we did that one already. Yeah, uh, Maria. Yep. Thank you so much, Jeff. Huge fan. Watch your videos on YouTube. Awesome. Thank you so much, Maria. Michael, best way to stop dog licking me. So um, I stop tipping the <laughs> Michael, stop tipping the dog, right? Stop tipping, number one. Number two, the question is, how do I stop an unwanted behavior? Through punishment. So you can be, you, there's two things you can do. Number one, first of all, check your sodium levels. Get a blood test done. I doubt you've got a sodium issue or a health issue, but you never know, right? You never know. You know, you could have a medical issue that your dog's signaling on. It's probably not that. This is what I would do. If my dog was licking me, I would say no, and I would use a remote collar. I would say no, and I would bark the dog. I would say no. I'd probably even give, like, listen, I'm not telling people to go and whack their dog, but it's like, if you freaking were licking me, I'd be like, get out of here, dog. And I'm not talking about punching the dog in the face. It's about like, get out of here. I see it now. Jeff Gellman says to hit your dog if it licks you. It's like, oh my God, people. It's like stopping a bunch of freaking snowflakes out there. And all I'm saying is you got to let the dog know that you don't like that. How do you let it like it? Through punishment. Next. Okay, sir. Um, Mary. My one-year-old male pit bull mix is starting to present nervous territorial behaviors, mostly on leashed yep. walks. He stares, then growls, escalates to bark. Some behavior indoors with strange noises. Yeah, so Mary, your dog is at one years old. It's going through another growth period. And what you're doing is you're seeing a lot, a lack of confidence in the dog, but you also might be seeing the true dog revealed. What I want you to do, Mary, is I want you to not think like with this, and I want you to think with this, which always sounds cool, cold, and uncaring. I don't know what kind of equipment you're walking your dog on, but a minute of a prong cower. The, the, the thing that will be a disservice to you right now is if you're not walking your dog in a structured heel, if you're giving your dog too much freedom. And anytime the dog is growling, you would say no and you give a correction. A lot of times people will say that'll make it worse. Prove it. That's my response. Prove it. No, it won't because we do it all the time. It's never been studied. We do the study because we do the work. My colleagues out there are doing the work. So bottom line is growling is not acceptable. It will actually raise the dog's confidence the more leadership you take to it. Next. Um, Maria, will you ever come to Pennsylvania? Yeah, actually, yeah. I usually do a seminar in Nazareth, Pennsylvania. Let me email um, Anthony to find out when we can book that next. What I usually got to wait till the warm weather. But also, I'm going to be in Frederick, um, Maryland, which is very close to you very close to you. Also Providence, Rhode Island, which is also close to you. People come from Pennsylvania. Even if you're all the way in Erie, Nazareth, Pennsylvania is still, is still close enough. Next. But, I'll, but I usually do one in Nazareth. Um, I might do one in Ohio in the spring, um, but look on www.rvdogtrainer.com. Next. Um, this is from George. Thanks, Jeff. Do you ever do group training in the Boston area? Absolutely not, George. Um, come we down. are the Boston area. We are in the Boston area. So Providence is the Boston area. So come down to my seminar in Providence, go to rvdogtrainer.com. But no, I don't. I don't. I'm not a, I personally don't like group classes, um, but I do a sem, <laughs> but I do a seminar in Providence. I don't need to do a seminar in Boston because Boston people come down to my seminar in Providence and it makes, it, it makes, it makes more sense, but we're local to you next. Uh, Marilyn, you missed me. Please go back. We, I can't go back, but could you ask your question again? I'm yeah. sorry if I missed it. Yeah, I don't remember your question. Um, but I, can, I can't really scroll back. Because it will, it screws everything up. Yeah, go ahead, keep your so, so sorry about that. Um, Alex, hi Jeff, my dog is naughty. Shall I cook and eat it? Hmm. Where's that one? Hold on. Uh, I right got it. There. It depends on what country you, you know, depends on what country you, <clears throat> um, you live in. Next. Um. Etchy. Etchy. Yep. Hey guys, how do I get my dog that is in down position to work through pressure when it comes to snapping at, uh, sorry, <laughs> other dogs? E collar correction causing him to avoid and moves but snaps when followed. 
I'm not sure if I understand the question. Dogs in a your down. Dogs, your dog's in a down. It snaps at other dogs. You got to keep, okay, down. advocate for your dog. Keep other dogs away for it from right now. Advocate for your dog. Keep other dogs away from it. Be careful how much pressure is put on your dog. When I mean by pressure, I mean environmental pressure, which could be from people and dogs. Right now, we have to advocate for our dog. Let it know that we're going to keep pressure away. And then you slowly start introducing pressure. You can actually use a clicker and food for that as well. So you want to reward the good behavior, but then also punish the bad behavior. If you're using the remote collar, what you want to do is you might be underwhelming the dog, which means the dog is working through it and it still might snap. But what I would do is I would always move dogs away, keep dogs on a leash, and I need way more information on that. But that's one of our protocols. What we do is we get the dogs to be in down around other environmentals that it's nervous about. We advocate for the dog until it gets used to it next. This one's from Kurt. Before hey, dogs show sign of fixation for reactivity that I can recognize, hair on back of dog's back goes up. Would this be a good time for a preemptive correction? Absolutely. Thanks. Firm <laughs> correction for small infraction. Right there. You may, you called it. Next. Um, don't worry, George. I it takes me. I don't have a um, I don't have a moderator on this 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 um on this one. So I'm do moderating it myself. So don't worry about it. You don't have to, you know. You don't have to respond to any of, the, any of these people. You're going to get it. Next. Uh, let's see. This will be a while to find it. Next. Jeff, three-year-old, Roddy male, reactive to dogs. So, Jeff, so um, a, lot of, a lot more information that I need if it's reactive to other, to, um, to other dogs, if it's on a leash during a walk. Number one, what kind of equipment are you walking your dog on? At a minimum, be on a prong collar. Teach your dog how to heal next to you. At the beginning of the sequence of any reactivity, tell the dog no. Correct. Ideally, remote collar heal is going to help you out a lot more. Advocate your dog with space, meaning don't just put your dog right into the mix of things. You want to advocate with space and work your dog in. Don't do the BAT protocols. BAT protocols, if they rarely work and also takes way too long, um, we sort of can do something very similar with a remote collar in like, a tenth of the time with a high level of success, almost 100%. So what I want you to do now is advocate for your dog. Make sure your dog is not aroused. If, the, if your dog is aroused, it's going to also be reactive. If your dog is scanning on the walk and it has a reactivity issue, it's going to be reactive. Also, how much structure is in your dog's house? Is your dog up on the furniture? Is your dog in bed with you? Are you crating your dog at night? Crating your dog when you're not home? Are you holding your dog accountable for even the smallest things? Going in and out of the crate, going through thresholds. Um, how you start the walk. Make sure there's no scanning. There's, there's numerous, numerous things that you can do to set your dog up for success, but then also give information to your dog when it when it begins to start failing or failing. Next. Um, John, is it bad to make a dog sit before they down? Is it better to teach down separate? Now you can do either one. It doesn't matter to me. Okay. Next question is from Jeff. If corrected late, he just escalates and nothing seems to break his focus. Best thing to do to help if it's an unexpected dog you see and catch him late. So Jeff, if you know somebody, I talk about um, sobriety all the time and addiction. A buddy of yours goes, um, calls you up and says, hey, a buddy of yours just got out of rehab, right? And calls you up and goes, hey, I'm heading to the bar. And you're like, don't you, don't you dare go to the bar. He goes, I'm going to go. And you're like, shit, I'm 60 miles away. I can't get there fast enough. What do you do by the time you get to the bar, your buddy's drunk. What do you do? probably punch him in the face, knock him out, put him in the back of your car, bring him home. You get out of there. If you have the chance to have a conversation with him prior to walking in the bar, you're going to be more successful. So if your dog explodes, what do you do? Just literally leave. Leave the area. Don't run away, but you missed it. You missed it. Guess what? It happens. We're all human and dogs are dogs. It happens. It happens to us. It'll happen to you. What you do is you train so hard that gives you a little bit more time to predict it. And also you teach your dog how to have better coping skills and also that they make better choices. Next. Okay. So we got a dollar ninety nine from Marilyn Day. Hey Marilyn, thank you so much. But she didn't ask her question again. She said, Go back to my original question, please. Marilyn, ask your question again. Ask it right here. Ask it we'll here. We'll answer it now. Yeah, ask it here, Marilyn. We don't know. We, we, we can't scroll up. We'll never find it. Yeah. We can't find Sorry it. Sorry that I missed it. Yeah. But we'll just ask it. Ask it right now. Yep. Go. Okay. Um, Etchy Madness. Thanks. Thank you for all your help and the great content. What type of training did you do with girl when it came to, came to avoiding training? Avoid Avoidness. Yep. Avoid whatever it is. I would love to use my training, my down, my uh, love to train my down to avoid other dogs. People Your dog maybe. So this is the thing with, believe it or not, girl just knows what no means. She won't avoid, she, she, 
she she can put pressure on dogs. Her natural instinct is to put pressure on dogs. So if I put her on a socialization yard with other dogs, she wouldn't avoid them. She does exterior herding. She does exterior herding. And then if there's a dog that's asking, acting a little bit snarky, she goes in and does a prey bite behind the dog. That's, that's girl. That's her MO. That's literally what she does. If she was hurt, if she was hurting animals, that's, she'd be great at the exterior work. So she just knows what no means, cut it out and, you know, enough. She just knows what that is. So those are all things that break her out of the cycle. That's all I did. My personal dogs, Kira and Girl, when it comes to obedience, don't know that many commands. What they do know, they just know it well. So I only train them a few things, but no, they definitely know. Next. Um, Mary? Yes, he is on prong. He is healed and only does it with distant male uh, strangers. And it says, I how. So what distant male strangers is what I want you to do. So what I don't want you to, what I want you to do is th there's a lot of different variables. Number one, I need to know what your energy is, what your tone of voice is. It's possible that you're making things worse, not on purpose. This is not a shaming or blaming or an accusation thing. But what I don't want you to do is I don't want you to use any high pitched voices, any physical or verbal praise. Don't tell the dog everything is okay. What you want to do is at the beginning of the sequence where the dog is seeing something. If the dog has seen something far away, that's when your punisher should be delivered is right there. All the information out there, you can also start using food, but it's hard to heal a dog and use food at the same time. What you're going to be doing is you want to start getting your dog on a remote collar so you can start getting your dog to break its, punish its focus from the environmental. If the environmental is other men that are far away, as soon as that dog starts loading, staring, first signs of arousal, that's when you're going to correct. And your dog goes, oh, shoot. Now, everybody online, not everybody online, a ton of people online are going to say that'll make it worse. My, my response is prove it. And no, it won't. We do it all the time. So the goal is I want my dog to ignore environmentals. That's what I want my dog to do. And you'd be surprised when you deliver a high enough punisher at the beginning of the sequence for things that lead to a bad behavior, what you're going to start seeing is you're going to start seeing a dog that goes, I don't see any dudes out there. What dog? What cat? What squirrel? I'm just part of you. Don't let people pet your dog. Don't let dogs come up to your dog. Don't let people come up to your dog. Become everything for your dog. Next. Caucasity. What about group puppy classes covering basic obedience and confidence building socialization? Um, Please pay attention. I am. I mean, we're trying to find the question. What about gr group puppy classes? Oh, we do a group puppy class now, but... Again, it's not going to be in the Boston. If you're the one asking about the Boston, we're not. Gonna, I'm not coming to Boston. It would cost you. It would cost. It's going to cost you thousands of dollars to have me come up to Boston. So for for we do a puppy class in Providence. It's almost over. I'm not sure when we'll start the new one. But you can do that all on your own. So you can do you can do a lot of this stuff. I'm against. I'm not a big fan of big box stores. But if you got an eight to twelve week old puppy. Go to a big box store and just have your dog freaking run around with those dogs. Also, get a bunch of little uh, – go to a playground, and when, when there's no kids there, work on the playground equipment. You can go on to Amazon and get all kinds of playground stuff. Get a YouTube video on, on uh, homemade agility equipment. You can get a swimming pool filled with bottles. You can, do all, you can do all kinds of stuff like that. But, but for us, that's not our gig. That's not our big thing. So we only, but we just have, we just did a puppy class and it's almost, it's almost, it's almost over. Next. Um, Kayla, don't worry. We got, we got this. Okay. Thank you though. Right. We, we got it. Um, Mary, Mary, how can I improve his confidence? I'm working on stronger leadership. My husband got deployed and I think he lost a sense of security yep. with him being gone. I'm basically training him to acknowledge me. So Mary, be everything to your dog everything cut off the affection this is the thing this is this is very very common just you know with your husband deployed or your spouse deployed or if you just got into a if you just got separated or if you just got divorced or if you just had a tragedy in your life many people use their dogs as an emotional crutch <coughs> unfortunately most dogs can't handle that most dogs can't handle the dog being an emotional crutch so the problem is the problem is is that you need to step it up so become everything to your dog and massive amounts of structure, Mary. Massive amounts of structure. All right? So that's what I want you to do. So follow my videos. What you see is what you should do. We show all of our work. So create your dog at night. Create your dog when you're not home. Hold your dog accountable. And watch out on your affection. 
people give way too much affection to their dogs. If you've got a nervous, fearful, reactive dog, it's a recipe for disaster. Next. Spin a spur. Uh, this is the best prep for my future puppy I've ever seen. Jeff, you're saving my bacon with all these videos yeah. and advice. Yeah, no shit. You're welcome. Sabrina. Yep. Shoot. Actually, back to the attack. As I wasn't expecting it in my yard, what do you do with or to the attacker and my dog? Well, I mean, it's your it's your daughter, right? This, this is your daughter, That's isn't your daughter, it? isn't it? Unless I misread it. Unless I misread it. I mean... I mean, if this was a random, I'm not going to have you spray your daughter in the face with pepper spray unless, like, you don't want her in your yard ever again. But, you know, if it's if, if, if somebody, if a dog came running into my I'm yard. I'm confused. Did we not get this I right? Know, you know, and there's Marilyn's question, too, right there. We'll, we'll answer it next, Marilyn. Okay. okay. So this is the thing. This is the thing. If if a complete strange dog ran, ran into your yard, on your personal property, you have the right to protect your dog, your property, your children, and yourself. So what do you do? Neutralize the threat. And a lot of people are like, oh my gosh, that's horrible. Why would you ever harm another dog? Well, hold on. A dog's already going to be harmed. So her dog was already harmed. So what I would do is if a dog's going to get harmed, I don't want it to be mine. If it's a complete stranger, you say to them, hey, I need your phone number. And I need your contact info. Your contact information. You call the police to file a report. But it's your daughter. So what are you going to do with her? You have to work it out between the two of you. Next. So Mar there's Marilyn's question. Now we see it, Marilyn. All right. Okay. I have two goldens, and one is three years. Yeah, this the is the other, first time we've seen this question, Marilyn. Yep. The other is my service dog, thirteen months. She is the dominant one. She jumps and chews on Sadie's legs. I'm introducing the e-collar to Dakota. Any help, please? Okay, so I'm not quite this. The thing is there. So 13-month-old dog, it's most likely a service dog in training. A 13-month-old dog can't be, a, can't be a service dog. Obviously, what you want to do is service dogs are held to a higher, higher uh, 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 conformity, in my opinion, of public access training and obedience. So what I would do is if you have a service dog, what I would do is make sure that that dog ignores other dogs. A true service dog, you want to ignore other people and ignore other dogs. That dog should be all you. So if you're getting a remote collar, what you want to do is this. There's a couple of things. Number one, you need to be able to shut this dog down from arousal. But a lot of dogs play fight. My dogs play fight. They bite each other's necks. They bite each other's leg. They bite each other. They, 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 people will be like, oh my, if I want to take photos of them, they're like, oh my God, they're fighting. I'm like, that's play fight. But when I say enough, they stop. But your service dog, what I would do is, especially since it's only 13 months old, it hasn't even gone into full maturity yet. You have no idea if any aggression is going to come out. What I would do is I'd be like, that's not acceptable for any of my dogs, let alone a service dog. You need to learn how to be calm around dogs. So I would spend a heck of a lot of time with that dog being calm. Um, I would also want my dog to be everything to me and not interested in other dogs. Now, if it's a service dog that when you take it home, it, you take off the vest or you take off the harness, and it's technically off the clock. Um, and as long as it's not a diabetic alert dog or a seizure alert dog, what you can do is if you want to have that dog have some like off time, you can say release and it, and it, and it releases and plays. But I want to make sure that you can get that dog to come back to you. But a remote collar is going to be able to stop all that stuff. Next. Okay. We're going to have to get rid of that person right there. Steph Nick 23. Hi, Jeff. Can't get my dog to sit. Shall I use violence? I, to, Bye, Felicia. To, so Steph, you can use a yummy treat to teach sit. All right, and I gotta ban you because that's a stupid question. Next, um, Shay. When greeting dogs on leash, my German Shepherd mix does fine initially, then gets snappy and aggressive only when the other dog turns to leave or walk away. Shay, <coughs> Shay, Shay. Are you brand new to my world? If you are, I'll give you a free pass. But if you're not, ah. Never, ever, 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 ever let your dog meet other dogs on leash. Ever. Never. It'll never work. And I'm sure some people are saying, my dog meets dogs on leash and that works every time. Okay. But don't do it. Don't do it. I don't want my dog meeting strange dogs anyway, on leash or off leash. But on a leash, it's a recipe for disaster. Mm -hmm. Next. Um, ba -ba -ba. Kim. Oh, hey, Kim. Hey, guys. Good to see you together. We're always together, Kim. 
do we, do we not, do we, is there something I need to know about? Oh, stop. Candace, seminar question. Do you ever get out to Iowa or near Omaha? No, no. I don't. Nope. Nothing yet. Nothing out there yet. I've, I've looked at Wisconsin, but that's about it. But he's got to go down. Hey, Angela, buddy. Can you, Potts, can you take that out into our bedroom at least? Because we're trying to do a show and it's a little bit loud. Okay, just watch out when you're plugging things in. You don't touch the metal. All right? We don't, we don't, need, we don't need your butt fried. Next. <laughs> you mean my body fried. Your body fried. Next. Thanks, oh, buddy. Oh, cast. Hey, my nine-month female pit bull terrier won't stop chasing my rabbit. I take my dog outside to use the restroom. It will just search for the rabbit. When the rabbit is in its enclosure, the dog whines. Oh, cast. You have to put your dog into avoidance. You've got to punish the behavior, remote collar for the sequence. So the beginning of the sequence of that dog gets aroused. As soon as your dog starts getting aroused, looking for the rabbit, because your dog can kill the rabbit. You know, not because it's a, <laughs> not because it's a pity. Just about I any mean, a chihuahua can kill a rabbit. You know, um, um, like, you know, a terrier can kill easily. A terrier can easily kill a rabbit. Mm -hmm. like, small, you know, Jack Russell terrier. You know, they can easily kill a rabbit. So what I would do is I would. Um, it's nine months old. And it's, it's, it's still obviously, well, dogs are always learning, but it's the beginning of it's getting into adulthood. We have no idea what's going to happen at 12 months old, 18 months old. So what I would do with this dog is I would let it know chasing rabbits sucks. Best way to do that, remote cower. Next. Mm -hmm. uh, Chevy, dog aggressive. Once you punish the loading, would you reward with food for looking at you? Not in the same sequence. I would wait until the next time. In other words, I'm not going to say that was wrong. And then in the same conversation, then the, the, it's a, here was a great example. Angela goes into, uh, we were at, um, we went to uh, PetSmart today because uh, um, uh, Romy had to get a bunch of hamster stuff. Could you imagine if Angelo came out with like some sort of like little hamster toy or a little stuffed animal and he had it in his pocket and he took it out and I'm and I'd be like, You've got to be kidding me, Angelo. You just stole something. And then he went back and he gave it back to them and apologized. I wouldn't give him a reward. Does that make sense? First of all, it's expected behavior. You don't freaking steal if you're a child of mine. So, um, but no, wait until, wait until you have a successful sequence, meaning that you walk by a dog or there's a dog in the distance and the dog looks up at you. Then you can reward mm -hmm. that. And use a clicker for that. Next. Okay. Julio. We're winding down, guys. My rescue dog, Pit Mix, whines a lot every time the car stops. He is currently using a bark collar during car rides, but still gets anxious. What would you recommend? Thanks. Amazing info. So, Julio, so what I would do is this. I would use the remote collar, not a bark collar, and I would teach the dog how to down in a vehicle. Down in a vehicle and then down underneath environmentals and down underneath stress. What I would do is, what I would do is, Keep the dog into a down. Any whimpering, it's going to be you're going to you're going to stop the whimpering. Let's also we have to end the show right now because um, uh, uh, um, it's been an hour and we only do an hour show. And Lynn has got another show to do at eight thirty as well. Um, she does her own show. Why don't you put a Why don't you put? Yeah, I'm not logged. Say I'm something. not logged in. You can't say something. I'm not signed in. Oh, so try to say something anyway. I'm oh, got in the it. Chat. Got it. Um, what's the name of your website? Well, I'm not on Facebook you, Live. What should people Facebook do? Let, go to my. It's on my personal page, Linda Tresca Gelman. Do they have to be friends of yours to see it? No. But I'm also going to put it on my. I'll, I'll share her her page. I'll share her live on my page. Um, this is the thing, guys. All these answers are how to stop unwanted behaviors. Keep in mind, though, all of our training is all, it's all more universal. For instance, I'm a huge advocate of good diet. I personally feed raw diet to my, to my dogs. You don't have to do raw diet, but most kibble is crap out there, just to let you know. Um, I'm a big advocate of good diet. I'm a huge advocate of structured exercise. I swim my dogs. I run my dogs. I walk my dogs. I bike with my dogs. Um, I do a lot of swimming this time of year, though. I'm a huge advocate of calm in my house. I want my dogs to be in my house, relaxed. I'm a huge advocate of containment. I like to crate my dogs at night, crate my dogs when they're, when I'm gone, I'll crate my dogs in the RV. I'm a huge advocate of teaching my dogs what, what I want of them, what the level of expected behavior is supposed to be. So I want my dogs to know a couple of basic commands. 
place, which is go to a dog bed, down, which is lie down. By the way, place is lying down as well. I want my dogs to walk politely next to me. I want my dogs to also recall when they're off leash. I also want my dogs to stop barking if they're barking or not bark at all. I want my dogs to also be not jumping up on people. I want my dogs to be able to be calm in a vehicle and calm around environmentals. I also want my dogs to be greeters of my family members. So it's not just about your dog's chasing its tail, shock your dog, and then do nothing else. It's all together. It's all together. All right. Jeff Gellman, Sally Canine Training. Sorry we didn't get to everybody's questions. I'll be on again. I think we can do this Monday night. Mm, maybe. Monday or Tuesday night. Check me out on Facebook and on um, Instagram, and we'll put up the little logo there. For all my Patreon folks, your Q&A video podcast will be on tomorrow. tomorrow. I'll do it probably first thing tomorrow morning. Um, I'll get that up. Um, and that's it, man. And I thank you all. And I love you all. And you're all special to me. And I can't I can't thank you all enough for just, just being part of my world. Thanks for the folks that made do donations. That's pretty, awesome. pretty freaking cool. You know, maybe one night we'll make enough to go on a date. What do we need? Like, we need, what, 40 or 50 bucks? We don't need, we don't need, depends where we go. Depends where we go. Rosalina's is a little bit more. Los Angeles is a little bit more. Movie though, even we went to a movie the other night. It was twenty two dollars. Got That's some. True. We got what do we get? We got some Reese's peanut butter cups for mm -hmm. what? Four bucks, five bucks. It wasn't that expensive there. No. We didn't even go out for coffee afterwards. We didn't. So what are we looking at? About thirty bucks for a quick date. Hmm. Fifty, sixty bucks for for dinner. That'd be cool <coughs> if we freaking did this once a week and got enough money for date night. That'd be awesome. Maybe that's our goal. Hey guys, support our date nights. All right, Jeff Gelman, Solid Canine Training, madly in love with all of you. Take care.